A common question among cinema goers would be, what truly is the best movie? It could be something that invokes you with real human emotion, cinematography that enables you to see and comprehend new dimensions of film, or maybe it was just one scene that was so immeasurably perfect, it stayed with you forever. A Spider-Man, a Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can, a spin the way. Now, films traditionally follow a three-act structure, which contains a setup, confrontation, and finally the resolution. Shrek is the first movie to break this conventional norm. The movie begins with narration, tricking the audience into believing this is a setup for the film. The damsel in distress, the dragon, the noble knight who will right all wrongs. But then you realize you were just reading a book in Skyrim. Shrek's avant-garde design is so immaculate, so jaw-droppingly perfect. Smash Mouth, who performed the opening song, said themselves, Shrek has saved my marriage and my entire life. Shrek's original incarnation was a children's book written by David Cage. But that book was based off the popular fighting game, Shrek Super Slam. Steven Spielberg found the book, purchased the rights to it, and wanted to make it into a motion picture. I love the story so much. There was something philosophical uh, that I had never seen before, ever, and couldn't think of a better original story to base this philosophy on. But soon realizing that his tiny human brain couldn't near comprehend the magnificence and grace that is Shrek. So he sold the rights to DreamWorks and made a much better movie. Mike Myers, the voice actor for Shrek, originally didn't use a Scottish accent, but a more Midwestern English tone. You can tell Lord Farquaad that if he wants to rescue me properly, I'll be waiting for him right here. I live in Smethwick, Birmingham. If you want the fucking ball, come down to Smethwick for energy. I'll come out of my house and I'll break your fucking legs. The film intelligently features many parallels to modern day societal norms, with the main character being unattractive and downright deplorable with his actions. Farquaad's castle, a barren but clean landscape, a total opposite of the real life Disney castle. And the quote unquote monsters of the film taking the heroic role as opposed to the human characters who have much more vindictive malice. The movie is set in the kingdom of Duloc. Now, Duloc backwards means, uh, Oh yeah, absolutely nothing. The movie begins with Shrek finding a wanted poster for all fairy tale creatures. This is clearly a commentary on how children are forced to grow up, abandoning their imaginary concepts of fantasy for the more stoic and cold reality of adulthood. Hidetaka Miyazaki would later take this theme and replicate it to create Dark Souls. One great feature the film has is its non-linear dialogue. Characters can say things and depending on your age, you could hear something totally different to the person next to you. He can talk! <laughs> that's right, fool! So did Donkey say, that's right, fool, or that's right, poo? That's right, fool! That's right, fool! This really was the Yanni and Laurel before its time. Notice how Lord Farquaad, the antagonist of the movie, is represented by the letter F. Much like the modern day Facebook logo. Clearly, DreamWorks Pictures were trying to warn us about the impending doom that is Mark Zuckerberg. <sighs> If only we listened. Early on in the film, Shrek and Donkey's paths collide. And to this day, I don't think I've ever seen better character development in the history of cinema. Jack and Rose from Titanic have nothing on these two and their long loving relationship. See, Shrek is green, which represents safety, ambition, and jealousy. Safety is represented by the fairy tale animals taking refuge in his swamp. Ambition for all the trials and tribulations he has to labor just to get his swamp back. And jealousy because he gets cut by Lord Farquaad near the end of the film. And Donkey is donkey colored, which represents him being a donkey. Many theorize why so many characters are terrified of Shrek, but Donkey shows nothing but admiration for him. Ah! That was really scary. There are two possible conclusions. One is that Donkey has been put under so much stress and abuse throughout his life, he snapped, showing no fear or emotion to anything that would terrify the average human. Or, it's because Eddie Murphy is a brainlet. <laughs> More on Donkey, he has probably one of the most critical lines in the entire franchise. Ah! Ah! What do you know? Oh, no! this is gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. Now, 
Making waffles would be next to impossible because no one would have access to Nescafe brown sugar in the year 2003. How do I know this film takes place in the year 2003? Well, it was actually leaked by the rapper Young Lean in the hit song, I Love Shrek, It's a Great Film, Please Watch Shrek. <laughs> If anything, Shrek and Donkey represent both the Republicans and the Democrats. Shrek believes in old traditions, a more linear way of life. And the first thing I'm gonna do is build a 10-foot wall around my land. Meanwhile, Donkey's more liberal, open to suggestion, and he's voiced by Eddie Murphy, who was recently the Democratic President of the United States. There are many dark themes throughout Shrek that are subdued, but not made clear to the normal viewer. Like how the audience cheer on Shrek and Donkey for beating up the knights. This bloodlust would later be turned into the Purge film series. Notice how in the opening, the three bears in the cage, but when they escape to Shrek Swamp, the mother bear is missing, with the father trying to comfort the child. Now, if you install Sirius Sam 2, start of the level floor terra, destroy this boulder and go inside the teleporter, you can find the mother bear hiding behind these rocks from Lord Farquaad's soldiers. Unfortunately, Sirius Sam is on Lord Farquaad's payroll, so she was quickly killed by dual semi-automatic snipers. <laughs> The three little piggies are given German accents in the film and explain to Shrek that Lord Farquaad has removed them from their home. Lord Farquaad, he hoofed and he puffed and he signed an eviction notice. This is in direct reference to May 7th, 1945, where Germany officially surrendered to the Allies, bringing an end to the... <laughs> bringing an end to the European conflict in World War II. The pig represents General Alfred Jodl, who signed the unconditional surrender of all troops in Europe. <laughs> Talking about dark themes, did you know that Shrek actually kills three people in the movie? He throws a dwarf into the lake, Thank you, Mr. Shrek. <laughs> scares an attendee at Duloc hey, so much, you. he killed himself just to escape. <laughs> and last but not least, he accidentally snaps Princess Fiona's neck. <laughs> Meanwhile, Donkey crushes six men in a head-on collision. Even worse is Princess Fiona, who murders a bird in cold blood and then eats her young. Seriously, she's, she's probably worse than Farquaad. The princess here was just- <laughs> Lord Farquaad himself is a play on late stage capitalism. His short stature shows the concept's early growth, but if given time, would grow into something truly horrible for the human species. All of his knights are faceless and identical, representing the average consumer feeding into the cycle of only caring for oneself. They follow Farquaad, being blindly obedient, removing all morals from the equation. When Farquaad is given the choice of what princess to pick, the executioner says three, but only holds up two fingers. One, two, three. Please have a three, my lord. This is because secretly, he wants to confuse Lord Farquaad to the point where he can't pick a spouse, because he wants Lord Farquaad all to himself. Now in this scene, Farquaad can be seen opening the door. Now in real life, could someone that sure open a door? Of course not. That's why we have handicap buttons. But Farquaad's total and absolute wanting for the death of Marxist ideals shows he can actually move muscle mass from his brain into his biceps to move almost any obstacle. Also, did you know when the gingerbread man is being interrogated, 59 million of Shrek's 60 million dollar budget went into creating a physics engine capable of simulating crumbs falling into the metal tray. This physics engine was later sold to Rockstar Games to power their flagship title. Rockstar Games presents table tennis. The one million dollars left over from the budget was used to generate this lens flare. JJ Abrams would later steal this and proceed to put it at least 50,000 times in every movie he's ever made. You said that your wife told you to stop with the lens flares. Your wife Katie said, that's enough with the lens flares. Well, I mean- Now you probably think the gingerbread man in Shrek is magical because he's an animated piece of food. But actually, it's because he's an animated piece of food with a salivary gland. Eat me! <laughs> There's only two songs in Shrek and the first is an introduction to the city of Duloc.
This is clearly DreamWorks satirizing the oversaturation of songs in fantasy films. That's why in their next animated film, Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, would have 11 songs. Now the most important scene of the film comes at the end of act one. And the main reason why Shrek won 13 Oscars, eight Golden Globes, and the Peabody Award for the most powerful, enlightening, and invigorating scene in human history. For your information, there's a lot more to ogres than people think. Example? Example? Okay, um, ogres are like onions. Now what does Shrek mean by this statement? The peasant critic would think that the comparison means that ogres have layers much like an onion. In the sense that ogres are complex beings capable of deep thought and emotions much like us humans. Look, I'm not the one with the problem, okay? It's the world that seems to have a problem with me. But because of their brutish exterior, they've been cast out from normal society. Humanity has already prejudged their appearance unfairly casting them out to live alone in exile. <sighs> they judge me before they even know me. That's why I'm better off alone. But in actual fact, it's because they both smell. Ogres are like onions. <laughs> they stink? Yes. Now when Shrek and Donkey encounter the dragon, we the viewer discover that the dragon is in fact female. Many films can boast having a female lead, but can they boast about a female dragon? I think not. Truly, DreamWorks were leagues above the rest when it came to equality. Now, there are many themes of Shrek being the ultimate messiah, much like Jesus. For example, he's exiled and mistreated by everyone, even though he could heal the sick. The ogre has fallen in love with the princess. Oh, good lord. <laughs> An ogre and the princess. <laughs> and there's even a scene of him moving a stone much like Jesus did when he left the tomb. Uh, what else is there? Oh yeah. So Shrek goes to the castle, finds Fiona and rescues her. Then Robin Hood and his merry men intervene and teach Shrek how to respect women in a musical number. And then Fiona thanks Robin Hood by <laughs> flat out killing him. Seriously, that, that was a fatality. Like, you, you never see him in the film again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Now, in the third act of the film, we have a shocking revelation that Princess Fiona has been living a lie. Because during the day, she's an attractive redhead princess. But when the night comes, she turns into Cameron Diaz. When Shrek goes to propose to her, his gift is a sunflower. Sunflowers can represent long life, feelings of adoration, loyalty and strong bonds but most importantly a sunflower is yellow and yellow represents getting no money on youtube now many have criticized shrek for its forced confrontation in the third act fiona talks down about herself to donkey and shrek overhears believing she's talking about him this is a really overused trope in animated movies you have either the misinterpretation of something to create conflict or the character who's been lying about their position and gets outed now i can forgive this because just how amazing of an experience shrek is to view what i can't forgive however is lord farquaad purchasing the horse armor dlc from oblivion but he does get eaten by a dragon so i think it's pretty fair Shrek is the tale of true love and the mask that society has placed upon it. It wants the audience to ask the bigger questions of what love really is. Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz, John Lithgow all do an amazing performance with what they were given. Shrek was the movie to rival Disney's animation. And to this day, I think DreamWorks are the only company that can come close to comparing to the monolith that is Disney Pixar. <laughs> It's just a shame that Donkey had to die at the end of the movie. Well, I didn't want to say nothing, but I got this twinge in my neck, and when I turn my head like this, look. Ah! 
Yep. Yep, he's dead. But before you guys ask, I'm not I'm not doing another one. So don't come <laughs>